Hello everyone, this is Jacob Hobio, the producer of the Apex. In this episode, Jan and James discuss how much of an advantage it is having instantaneous access to literally anything that you want to learn. But with great power comes great responsibility. Sometimes there are so many resources available at our disposal that we forget where to start. Listen to Jan and James discuss practical things you can implement in your life to help you not only learn a process, but master that skill. Yeah, Jimmy. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for exclusive access to our highlights as well as our favorite pieces of advice. If you want to support us, there are three ways to do so. One is to donate to our cause at www.patreon.com backslash the Apex Podcast. Second, visit our merch line that is proudly partnered with Envision Clothing Company at EnvisionClothingCompany.com. The final one is completely free. All we ask is if you learn something from this episode or know someone that needs to hear our message, share it with them. Please subscribe and hope this pushes you toward your apex. All right, if you're listening to this and you're not subscribed to the podcast yet, you're going to want to because me and James are making a point of every single we are sitting down and recording practical, applicable, and a whole bunch of other adjectives that are associated with positive things. We're going to review them. We're going to be dropping a whole bunch of advice every single Friday from now till the end of time. Um, but it's going to be crazy. We're going to try. We're going to give it a shot. All right? So everybody that's listening right now, if you are not subscribed to the Apex Podcast, go ahead and whatever you're doing right now, you can take three to five seconds and go push that button because you're going to want to make sure that you are tuned in to all of the information coming your way. Today, we're going to talk about something that drives me up a wall, <clears throat> right? Because this entire podcast segment is called Getting It Off My Chest for a Reason. So I realized that going through 2020 the way that I did, um, as far as building a business, trying to leave the nursing profession, um, and, and making a whole bunch of life-altering choices, really opened my eyes, right, to, uh, Frank Sinatra put it perfectly, you know, how many kicks people really get from stomping on a wing, right? Now, one of the beautiful things about today's day and age, and Gen Zs, if you're listening to this right now, you are the generation that has the highest advantage in this category, is the instantaneous access to information, right? We talked about this a little bit last episode towards the end of the podcast, and I kind of went on a rant that said that there's literally no excuse for you not to be able to go learn something. Right? And, and today, I was in a conversation with somebody that was like, oh, I feel like I'm in a complete roadblock. I don't know which way to go. You know, and they're asking me questions. I don't... Is that even a word? All right. And it's like, we live in an era of instantaneous access to information. So the conversation that I want to have today is a about places that you can go to learn things and b a lot of the ways that me and james are self-taught because in reality james is probably actually he is the only one out of our crew that has a degree inside of the business school the rest of us are all science majors and everything else but james has had a lot of experience outside of the traditional education system that he put himself in purposefully in order to learn new things and so what we're going to talk about today is how to expand your knowledge base outside of your degree, right? And so the first thing that I'm going to say is if you want to learn something new, doing exactly what you're doing right now is a great place to start. Podcasts in general, there's thousands of them out there, and a lot of them have really, really cool insights. Some of my favorite ones, honestly, are... Um, the Social Media Examiner. Um, Social Pros is a good one. Anything by Andy Priscilla is amazing. Anything by Tim Ferriss is amazing. The Jocko Podcast is phenomenal. You know, I love listening to Drunk History. There's tons of these podcasts out there you can listen to that literally will give you information on whatever you want to learn. So that's my first recommendation would be podcasts. So James, when you were going out, and I mean, for those of you that, that have not heard um, James is a little bit of a solopreneur himself and has, you know, started and successfully kind of um, scaled some small businesses with T-shirts and his own 
consulting business before he came on board with Apex and all of that other stuff. So I'm genuinely curious. When you were deciding, um, you know, as a teenager, young 20s, to go down that path, how exactly did you learn or find the answers to the questions you were seeking when you were attempting to build businesses? So to start, I'm still young 20. I'm only 23. Just to, to clear that up a little bit. I guess um, I'm only mid-20s. Yeah. yeah. Um, my best friend was YouTube. It still is. Anything that I wanted to know on any platform, software, topic, anything like that, I was going to YouTube. If there wasn't anything on YouTube, I was going to Google, and I would eventually find myself in the threads of Reddit. That's Reddit is super underrated. That is a rabbit hole. They used to say when YouTube first came out, like once you clicked on that first recommended video, you were there stuck for hours. That was me in Reddit. Just forum after forum, thread after thread, anything to do with how to fix the problem I was having at the time. Because I, I really didn't look things up out of curiosity. I looked them up as they came and solution-based. So for me, anytime a client or something I was trying to do failed the first time, I wasn't clicking the X in the top right corner. I was going, opening a new tab, typing it into Google, finding a Reddit thread, and just scrolling and reading and thinking about all of the possibilities that could play out for what I was trying to solve. And, and I've taken numerous projects on that going into them, I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. And by the end of it, I felt like an expert because I was able to use Reddit and YouTube and Google and the forums for the platform that I was on because almost every website now has a help center. Mm -hmm. They have that little button that pops up in the bottom right corner that's annoying unless you need it. And then it's impossible to find for whatever reason. <laughs> um, but but they all have it now. Yeah, so the, one of the first projects that I took on that I really was throwing myself out into the sea, basically, was when I went and worked cybersecurity. And there is so much language and lingo and terminology in cybersecurity that me, at 18 years old, I felt like a lost dog my first week. And what I ended up doing was the guys that I was working with that ended up being the founders of the company, I would sit in on their phone calls and their meetings, and I would just sit in the corner of the room with a notebook and a pen, and all of the words that they said that I didn't know, I would write them down, and then after the meeting on my own time, I would go Google every one of them and write the definition down. So that if it came up again, whether it was doing SEO, digital marketing, social ads, anything like that, I at least knew what I was talking about to some extent. Right. That's a huge thing. Like, I remember um, going into nursing, right? And uh, for those of you that, that are hearing this for the first time, uh, I was an ICU nurse for two and a half years prior to um, really diving in and going full-time with Apex. I went to nursing school, I got my RN. And then I was actually one of the first, actually, I think I might have been the first um, ICU float nurse at Altman that was a new graduate nurse. And, and the, my general argument for why they should let a new grad into the float pool um, was because we're primed to learn. Like, we just got out of school. We're agile. We are able to, you know, absorb information because that's what we're used to. That's, that's what we had just gotten done with that phase of our lives. And... The first thing that I would do um, for the educational process of becoming a float nurse was starting off on the cardiac ICU and then learning the surgical ICU and then learning the medical ICU and then learning the ER and then learning trauma bay. And for anybody that's been in the medical field, they know that those are all very different units with very different personalities, different surgeons. You know, they all do different procedures. So every single time I had to move floors, I had to learn new language, new processes and everything like that. And I didn't realize it at the time, but the blessing of being able to go through that was that I learned a process for learning. There is such a thing. Like, there, there is a process to be able to learn something effectively. And that's the other half of the show that I'm going to kind of, you know, lead you guys to is, you know, the first portion is understand that there is limitless amounts of information out there. Now, what happens is sometimes because there's so much information out there, we 
we don't look up anything because we don't know where to start, right? So here's, here's a little bit of an insight into a process that you can go through. And James did a perfect job of transitioning me into this. It's start by understanding the verbiage. If you really want to learn something inside and out, the first thing that you can do is kind of like studying a language, right? Study the verbiage. Study the acronyms. Study the things that are going to allow you to read the textbook, that are going to allow you to listen to the videos and, and understand what they're saying that will allow you to listen to the podcast, and when somebody uses an acronym that's industry-specific, you already know what it is, right? So that would be the first piece of advice that I would give somebody, is, is that at the start of the learning process, if you want to, like, develop a new skill or you want to learn something new, then the first thing is to really understand how the language is spoken. You know, and then once you have how the language is spoken, the rest of it will build on itself. It's, it's kind of like as an athlete, right? The first thing that you want to get down is your form. And then you add strength. If you, if you have strength with bad form, you're just going to hurt yourself. But if you have really, really good form, you can whoop the crap out of somebody that's just strong. You know, it's the same thing with anything you learn. If you have a good foundation, then you can build on top of that relatively easily and without it having, you know, issues later on. Because if somebody questions you on your knowledge and all you been able to learn is like the fancy stuff at the top, the trending words on Google, then when they start to ask questions that are a little bit deeper, you're not going to be able to answer them. And that's a problem. Right? So learn the verbiage first. If, if you're listening, Phil, learn the verbiage first. There you go. That's the last time I'm going to say it. Okay. So, next step, James. If you were going to learn a new skill, okay, you First things first, you lo- you know all the acronyms now. You understand how they're talking and stuff like that. What types of YouTube videos, like what things would you actually search for? If somebody wanted to learn a new skill, what are some things that they can actually type into a search bar that might bring up something that's not super overwhelming for them, but is actually just the next step in the process? So for this, I'm going to take it to something that more people than not might be able to relate to. And that's the journey I'm going through with starting a TikTok right now. And with that, I decided it was something I wanted to do back in early December. We're now third day, fourth day of February. I still haven't posted a single video two months later. I didn't even have the app when I decided that was what I wanted to do. So my first step was to get the software. So for me, it was TikTok. For you, it might be Final Cut for someone else, it might be Photoshop. Get a hold of it. I don't care how you get a hold of it. Just get a hold of it somehow. And then once you... Go around robbing people. We don't want want anybody mugging somebody. No, but there are (laughs) hundreds of ways to get get things. Um, Think about your Netflix account. Do you actually pay for that? I doubt it. (laughs) (laughs) uh, Thanks, Dad. If you're listening to this, I appreciate it. But um, the first thing is to get it and see what all it has. And for me, when I downloaded TikTok, I I watched the content. I went to the search and I looked for the content that I was thinking about trying to put out. And I started watching what they were doing. So find the industry leaders. Find out what they're doing. And then once you have that understanding of what everything is, the language, all of that kind of stuff, then you really dive into the details of what exactly you want to know. For me, it was how to edit a video, how to get audio, how to overlay music, how to add in transitions and effects, how to do all of that stuff. So then I went to YouTube, then I went to Reddit, then I went to Google. What do I need to be able to edit a TikTok video outside of TikTok? So I opened my MacBook, iMovie's free. So I recorded them on my iPhone, sent them to my MacBook, and spent probably eight hours editing a 20-second video. Mm -hmm. So it went from getting a hold of it and learning the language to watching who's doing it and succeeding, and then diving into the nitty-gritty and really finding out the solutions to what they're doing to make their end product look and feel and sound the way that it does. And now... Now that I've done all that, two months later, I'm on the verge of pulling the trigger and 
publishing that first video. Yeah, no, I've got to, I got to say, like, um, this episode, I'm picturing, you know, this being very compact. We're going to kind of wrap it up, like, actually building the house. And I think we're giving people enough ammunition to go out and try to learn something new. So in order to really wrap that up and kind of bring this idea home, what I'm going to tell you is that, you know, me and James just kind of laid out a couple of different frameworks. A, you have to understand that there's limitless amounts of information, right? Start small, understand the verbiage, build a foundation. And there's something that James said that I really want to just drive home to you. The only way that you're ever going to master a skill is if you have the mindset of being willing to spend eight hours editing a 20-second video. You can read as much shit as you want. You can look at as many articles as you want to look at. You can try to watch as many YouTube videos as you want to do. But until you actually download that shit and try to make it happen, nothing's going to work. You're never going to gain any skills. You're going to be an intellectual person that ends up being an all love and happiness to my academic friends, to my professors and all the people inside the academic world. But you don't want to end up like somebody that has been stuck in the academic world for so long that when somebody that comes in that is actually on the outside world, making it happen, boots on the ground, fighting, scratching in the freaking trenches, and they're like, hey, yeah, this works. And the academic looks at them and is like, well, that's not best practice. Oh, whew. that just like gets the hair on my forearms to stand up. When somebody looks at it, it's like, well, you could be doing it better this way. I'm like, well, when's the last time you attempted to actually do it instead of just learning about how to do it, right? Go out there, build a foundation, understand the verbiage, research your craft, start honing your craft intellectually, right? Like learn as much as you possibly can. But at some point, at some point, you're going to have to spend eight hours editing a 20-second video. And I don't know how the video turned out exactly, James, but the first couple of times I edited a video, they were shit. Oh, it's actually, it's absolute shit. Yeah, it's horrible. Like, so you have to be willing to go out there and just record a couple of horrible videos the first couple of times. And so if you're a Gen Z listening to this or you know somebody else around my age that's playing around with photography or videography or you want to go do coding or you want to be a web designer, developer, whatever you want to be, you can be whatever that is. Build the foundation, understand the knowledge, be willing to fail and put it into practice as sooner rather than later. Because the sooner that you can actually like, like the perfect example, if you are somebody that likes making music, it is so easy to just put stuff out on SoundCloud now. And all it takes is one thing to take off, right? Every artist that has ever been an artist sucked until they had one song that was not sucked. Right, like they, everybody was undiscovered, at some point, and then they put something out, and then got discovered, and now they're here. Right, Posty, was non-existent, and then he put out something that was banger, and then blew up, but he put out a banger because he put out a whole bunch of shit that sucked, and got good at it, and now he has a whole bunch of stuff out, and they're all bangers, every single one of them. I'm a huge Post Malone fan, so I believe that, but like. The principle is sound. You put out a whole bunch of stuff that sucks. All it takes is one thing that's awesome, and then you kind of lock into your creative flow, and then all of a sudden, you like you start putting out banger stuff all the time. That's just what it is, y'all. Don't be don't be shy. Be willing to just learn it and then start applying it. Because the more you apply it, the better you'll get at it, and the more advice you'll actually be able to give other people because you'll have attempted it, failed at it, attempted it again, and found something that works. And the last thing I want to throw in there is don't be afraid to ask somebody for help. I don't care if it's the YouTuber you watch that has 5 million or 5,000. I don't care if it's somebody in a Reddit thread, somebody on your Facebook page or your LinkedIn or your Instagram. If they're doing something that you want to learn about, ask. We are in an environment where people are motivated to lift up and help one another, especially when it comes to a craft or a trade or a profession. And if you make that initial content contact to reach out and say, I'm ignorant, I want to learn, I want you to teach me, chances are they're going to get on their high horse and just drag you along with them. You're going to become their partner at some point, and they're going to just show you everything you need to know, all because of one question is, can I learn, and admitting that you that you don't have those skills yet, yep. but you want them. Yes, that is a huge key. Like understanding that you may not have the skills yet, 
but you want to learn them. Because I see this a lot with Gen Zs and, and, and millennials, especially. Just because you've learned it online or you've learned it in a degree does not mean that you know how to use it. Understand that. Just because you've learned something does not mean that you know how to apply it. So that's where we're going to leave this. I hope that you guys got some more value out of this, you know, 20 minutes of us basically just going on rants every Friday. But uh, till next time, I'm Jan. We've got James hanging out over here. We're up in Bliss Tower right here in downtown Canton. Check us out at www.chasetheapex.com. And if you are a business that needs a helping hand, shoot us a message. We'd love to come out and hang out. So, till next time, peace.